planning on being a doctor? <laughs> I was actually, I had just started at college. I was a freshman. Okay. A few and, days in. And you changed course because of 9-11. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I realized I had no idea what Afghanistan was, where it was, what Al-Qaeda was, who Osama bin Laden was, and I needed to get out of my bubble I was living in fast. So ultimately, you joined the CIA and they dropped you into the middle of Afghanistan. How, how, how long did it take you to get into the middle of Afghanistan? Uh, well, I mean, obviously CIA can move as fast as they want to, uh, a lot of times if the bureaucracy <laughs> doesn't, doesn't hamper it. So, right. uh, it pretty rapidly. Okay. And you realize while on the ground that we were doing this all wrong. I wouldn't necessarily say that. And, uh, you know, I do point out a lot of criticisms, but again, many of those that I point out, if not the entirety of them are always about the bureaucracy, never really at CIA or poking, a poking the eye of CIA. It's always when an external factor comes in and slows us down. I'm a guy who likes to keep it at 11. <laughs> and so that was always very frustrating for me. You went in and sort of went undercover the way we see cop shows with drug dealers. You did that with the Taliban. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And you can see there's a uh, photo insert with the book that shows when I went, quote unquote, full native, uh, had a long beard. We call it a two fister, which means you can put two fists around your beard, uh, dressed like the locals. And uh, I mastered their language as well, which is Pashto. What did you learn deep undercover? Well, uh, very rapidly, I learned that uh, there was an ID network that was existing throughout Afghanistan, and it was controlled by one gentleman who we gave the code name Wolverine. Obviously, I've changed that. That wasn't his name within the CIA, uh, but it then became my focus. Well, we got to destroy that, and so uh, that's that's what we learned, and that's a big revelation within the book. You, uh, you actually, it was the biggest IED uh, sort of network that that you helped bring down. What about the argument that they wanted to destroy America? What did you learn about that? What the the inner workings, the inner thinking of those people? Yeah, I, I don't know that that was ever uh, necessarily their focus. I mean, their focus is much more insular and much more myopic. They're worried about their own country, and they're worried about regaining power. Uh, a lot of people forget that the Taliban actually was in power uh, and controlled the government for several years prior to uh, 9-11. So that's their main focus. Yeah. Left of Boom is the book, How a Young CIA Case Officer Penetrated the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. You had to do all of this while maintaining some type of normalcy with your family <laughs> yeah and uh, I actually just had to tell my parents what I've been doing for the past 10 years last week so um, you know that was a pretty difficult conversation and now a lot of a lot of friends and family are actually finding out from when they saw it in the New York Times last Friday so uh, it's been it's been a real wild ride the past few days how hard is it to maintain a secret CIA identity from your girlfriends and moms and everybody else. <laughs> yeah, especially from 7,000 miles away. Uh, it, it, it's, it's extraordinarily difficult. And that's why, you know, I talk about in the book, a, a lot of CIA officers realize quick, okay, well, we'll just hang out internally. You know, we'll just hang out with other CIA families. And, and that's an easier path. I was a young man. Keep in mind, I grew up within the CIA. Everything I did was in my 20s. So uh, for me, I, you know, single guy, I was still wanting to lead a pretty robust social life. And that brought a lot of challenges along, as you'll see in the book. Yeah. In the book, you, you there's a lot of blacked out sections. Is that mm -hmm. for show or what? what is the reason for blacking out a lot of words? So that's not for show. That's uh, that's the official government response. So the manuscript had to be given to them, and they redact certain areas. Now, as an author, you can write around it. For me, I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to release it just as is so the American public can see what I was allowed to talk about and what I was not allowed to talk about. You did tell your brother. Your brother knew. Yep, the book's dedicated to him. It says uh, to my brother, the only one who knew until now. And so you, 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 uh, you, you, for your friends and family found out, you didn't tell them, hey, this is coming out. They opened up the New York Times and said, hey, is this your brother? <laughs> yeah, sadly. I mean, uh, I like I said, my parents was the biggest anchor I've been carrying for the past 10 years, lying to them because obviously they raised me and they love me the most. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just told them last week and, um, you know, uh, 
I, I plan on having a conversation at the next family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Left of Boom is the book. This is a TV show waiting to happen. Anybody knocking on your door? Uh, no, negative. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, a joke that a lot of us CIA guys have is when it's really authentic, people tend to find it boring when it hits TV. <laughs> there <laughs> so. you go. All right. Douglas Laux, uh, the author of the book Left of Boom, getting a lot of attention, St. Martin's Press. Douglas, thank you for your service and thank you for your time. Hey, I really appreciate it. Thank you. 758 KTRS.